Hello everyone. So, uh, if you recall <coughs> we were solving a problem of uh, surface condenser which is a cell and tube type uh, surface condenser and uh, we are uh, this is a uh, very comprehensive problem because many aspects of uh, condenser design we want to discuss and we are continuing with the problem for uh, <coughs> Uh, we are continuing with the problem from the last lecture. So, uh, if you see or if you recall, we have done uh, this uh, um, calculations and certain important design quant quantities we have obtained. Uh, we have got uh, the mass flow rate of steam, we have got the mass flow rate of coolant, we have got the total amount of heat transfer we have got the number of tubes and the length of the tube. This we did not get through calculation, this we have assumed that outside diameter of the tubes <coughs> that will be uh, 0 0.0254 meter. So, uh, this cell and tube <coughs> heat exchanger I just uh, like to remind you uh, for recapitulation I like to mention that in this water as coolant is flowing through the tube side and steam is condensing over the tube. And this is a very large condenser and it is for a power plant <coughs> of um, uh, high capacity. Now, we are we should estimate the cell diameter and check the tube side pressure drop. We should also have a closer look to different heat transfer resistances. So, now if we go uh, to this slide, we can see <coughs> that there are 5 resistances, tube side, um, um, uh, tube side fluid there is a resistance that means, the water flowing through the tube side there will be some convective resistance that is 25 percent of the total resistance, tube side fouling that is 36 percent of the total resistance, tube wall that is only 2 percent see it is heat transfer through uh, metallic surface by conduction and generally it is small. So, in many heat exchanger calculation uh, at the first round people may neglect this one because this is generally small. Then cell side fouling that is 16 percent and cell side resistance that is 35 percent. So, out of all these things the 36 percent is the tube side fouling and that is quite large. Cell side um, heat transfer coefficient uh, that is condensation heat transfer coefficient that should be low, but what happens due to the effect of inundation etcetera the average heat transfer coefficient falls. Unless we make some method to uh, take care of this, so the uh, um, average heat transfer coefficient that falls. But what is to be noted that tube side fouling is quite high 36 percent. So, there should be even cell side fouling is also not negligible. So, there should be some method in heat exchanger to take care of the fouling that means, time to time the heat exchanger uh, both the tube side and the cell side needs to be cleaned. And particularly tube side fouling is very high. So, tube side fouling offers the maximum resistance and there could be different schemes of kill, uh, cleaning. Uh, one uh, scheme of cleaning could be chemical cleaning and another uh, scheme which is also very widely used that people use, uh, people circulate uh, <coughs> metallic balls of suitable size through these tubes and then uh, due to this circulation this metallic ball they uh, help in dislodging the fouling layer and then it has been it has to be cleaned. So, this is one aspect of it. Now, we so far we have not got the cell diameter, cell length we have got some idea that tube length is <coughs> around 15 meter I believe uh, that is what we have calculated. So, uh, of that order the cell uh, length should also be of that order. The expression of cell diameter is a function of heat transfer area A and tube length L T 
cube layout parameter p t p r and obviously, the outside diameter of the tube that is d o. So, there is some, some sort of a formula which is actually um, uh, basically some uh, <coughs> empirical formula with that d s or cell, cell diameter can be found out. So, if we uh, look into the how it is done, so it is like this, so the tubes are layout laid like this. Let us say the tubes are laid like this. So, I have taken just as some example something like this. So, now the cell diameter has to be provided to encompass all the tubes. So, <coughs> actually what will be the tube layout that one has to first uh, identify and then based on the tube layout one has to first identify what will be the tube layout and then based on the tube layout one has to select the cell diameter. Some sort of a clearance has to be kept and uh, there are uh, certain recommendation and it will depend on the outer diameter of the tube plus the tube pitch. So, that will also come. So, let us see what are the things here. Uh, this is ki uh, kind of a formula which is bit empirical with this we can calculate the cell diameter where C L is the tube layout constant. C L is 1 for 90 degree and 45 degree. <coughs> so, 90 degree and 45 degree what are 90 degree and 45 degree? Suppose this is the tube layout that means, they are laid or arranged in square array. So, this included angle is 90 degree. So, this is your 90 degree layout and if we rotate this then If we rotate this, so we will get some sort of a forty five degree <coughs> kind of a uh, uh, arrangement, and if they are staggered, then one can get this 30 degree or 60 degree depending on how the tubes are rotated. So, depending on uh, this kind of things uh, something has been discussed in um, uh, in case of earlier also I have discussed this thing and uh, in case of uh, silent tube heat exchanger these things are discussed. So, I will not uh, uh, spend much time on this what we like to say that uh, this C L can be taken depending on the tube layout and uh, C L is equal to 1 uh, for uh, 90 degree and 45 degree let us take that and C P T accounts for the incomplete coverage of the cell diameter by tubes. <coughs> See what is happening that uh, actually uh, we cannot bring a tube very close to the cell. So, that is why sometimes, sometimes though half a tube will come, uh, so we avoid to have any tube there. So, how can I explain it? It is like this, let us say one row of tube is something like this, another row of tube is so probably here one tube we do not give. Uh, at the end we do not give. So, towards the end generally it happens. So, this C P T accounts for the incomplete coverage of the cell diameter by the tube and then C P T is equal to 0.93 for one tube pass more number of tube passes the value of C P T will be lower and C P T is equal to 0.9 for two tube passes etcetera. P T is the tube pitch which is equals to 0 0.381 meter this is a given number for this particular design and P R is the tube pitch ratio P T by D 0. So, that we can calculate. So, P T has been given 
Uh, as you can remember the inner tube and diameter and outer tube diameter were uh, supplied in this problem. So, similarly p t has been given. So, now this uh, I have told how to select the or what could be the guideline for selecting the inner diameter and outer diameter. Similarly, there is a <coughs> there is some sort of a judgment to be taken how you can calculate or how you can uh, select the pitch. See, you make the tubes more close, then there will be very less path of uh, steam flow. Obviously, that is not very good. And if you make it uh, more sparse, the tubes, if you make more sparse, then what will happen? Your cell diameter will increase, the heat exchanger size will increase. So, one has to make a compromise from experience, from the I, again from uh, handbook, etcetera, one can uh, take some sort of a hints and then one can select the p2. So, all these things have been calculated. Next slide if we move, then from there we can calculate the cell diameter which is 5.1 meter. This is the cell diameter. Uh, <coughs> so, more or less the geometrical parameters we have got. Sometimes after this again the geometrical parameters are to be rechecked. Uh, by modifying certain other uh, quantities which we will see. Sometimes uh, during the mechanical design itself the, um, uh, <coughs> the uh, geometrical parameters are changed while doing the mechanical design. But as I have told in this course we are giving we are focusing on only thermohydraulic design and design analysis. So, we will be satisfied with this cell diameter we know how to arrive at the cell diameter, but in many cases it has to be checked and rechecked and sometimes it needs to be modified. Now, uh, we go for the pressure drop calculation uh, in the tube side. See the tube side pressure drop calculation is very crucial uh, not on the cell side because you see cell side for cell side your steam is flowing and the <coughs> motive power for the steam or the capability for steam movement that comes from the turbine itself. So, turbine is releasing the steam at a at certain velocity and pressure and uh, um, so this will give the steam uh, ability to move through all the tubes of the tube banks, still it is condensed. So, <coughs> the tube side pressure drop uh, again there are certain things, um, let us try to understand what it is. Uh, you see the tubes are, sorry, tubes are laid like this, this is a tube, this is the second tube. So, tubes are laid like this and through this tube when fluid flows there will be a pressure drop, but sometimes what happens there are tube passes etcetera. Let us say this is another pass of the tube. So, up to this this goes 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 and then there are three more tube through this the fluid comes back. Okay. And then it, it is like this and this side the fluid comes out. So, for the tube side fluid this could be the inlet and this could be the outlet. So, this kind of configurations are possible. And if this kind of configurations are there, obviously you can understand there will be some sort of a pressure drop when it is passing through the tube, when it is passing, when the fluid is passing through the tube there will be some pressure drop and when it is taking a turn returning then there will be uh, some additional pressure drop and both one has to take care of. The pressure drop on the tube side is calculated as follows, delta P total is equal to delta P T tube inside the tube and delta p r for returning. The pressure drop through the tubes can be calculated from this. 
uh, this is very easy you can understand there is a friction factor and the length of the tube <coughs> then uh, there is some sort of a uh, mass flow rate through the tube. So, um, simple uh, pressure drop formula one can use and uh, this, this kind of correlation has been suggested. So, with this one can calculate what is the um, <coughs> what is the pressure drop through the tube. <coughs> so, uh, you see uh, friction factor we are getting and uh, from friction factor this is your Reynolds number. So, this, this, this gives the friction factor f is the friction factor. Now, if we go to the next slide. So, n p is the number of passes here it is only one pass. So, number of passes is important because that gives the total total if there is uh, if the length of the tube is 2 sorry if the length of the tube is L and if there is 2 uh, number of passes then the total length of the tube which the fluid has to uh, pass through will be 2 L. So, in this case it is 1. So, diameter we have got and G is the uh, related to the mass flow rate. So, mass flow rate we have got and therefore, we have got what is the pressure drop through the tube. Pressure drop through the tube and then what is pressure drop due to return is given by this equation and here there is only one pass. So, you will get this kind of an equation. So, basically uh, these uh, 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 flow, uh, pressure drop through the tube and pressure drop through the return that can be combined together to get the total pressure drop. Total pressure drop we have got and then from the total pressure drop the pumping power can be determined that m into delta p total <coughs> divided by rho and efficiency of the pump. Efficiency of the pump these pumps are big pumps. So, one can take as <coughs> the efficiency to be uh, high like 85 percent or so and with that we have got that the pump power will be 829 almost 830, 830 kilowatt. So, you can understand this is a big pump, this is basically the feed water pump uh, of the uh, power plant and it should be quite uh, large for uh, such a capacity of the power plant and we are getting uh, 829 or 830 kilowatt around 830 kilowatt the pumping power we are getting. So, what did we get from this calculation? We got several things we got the length of the tube, we got the cell diameter and uh, so the uh, more or less the size of the heat exchanger is known and then we have got uh, the number of the tubes that is also very important how many tubes are there. Then uh, what will be the pressure drop? So, pumping power how much pumping power is needed? So, for this condenser that we could get for only for the condenser. Now, you see there will be <coughs> there will be other requirement. So, only for the tube side resistance of the condenser we have got the pumping power should one should not take that this is the total pumping power for the power plant. Now, uh, now um, <coughs> let us go to the next slide, next slide uh, certain analysis has been given. So, you see what we have done at the beginning of the calculation tube side velocity we have assumed that is 2 meter per second. So, now let us say uh, this this velocity we vary little bit we have got for we have got the calculation for 3 different values one is 1.5 meter per second one is 2 uh, meter per second for which the calculation has been presented over here and another is 2.5 meter per second. We have calculated the number of tubes and you see as the velocity increases obviously, the total amount of flow rate is same water flow rate. So, number of tubes will reduce. Then <coughs> Reynolds number there will be certain change in the Reynolds number. Uh, heat transfer coefficient, heat transfer coefficient will increase as we are increasing the that is of course, coolant side heat transfer coefficient will increase 
as we are increasing the number of tubes. As you can see that the <coughs> Reynolds number is increasing, so we will have an increase in the heat transfer coefficient. Reynolds number is increasing, so heat transfer coefficient will also increase. Outside heat transfer coefficient, there is not much of a change, not much of a change in the outside heat transfer coefficient. It will remain in the same range. But this is low because as I have told that it is the average heat transfer coefficient uh, and there is a large effect of inundation. Overall heat transfer coefficient uh, there is a small change, then heat transfer area will change, length of the tube uh, will change. Uh, we have got 13.2 uh, meter for the current design, it should be small for your this one. Uh, low velocity uh, of uh, water and it will be large for higher velocity of water. Cell diameter, cell diameter will also change, cell diameter will reduce if we are increasing the velocity of the coolant. So, that is another point and then the pressure drop per uh, tube or rather the pressure drop, pressure drop we can see that there is a large change. Smaller tube diameter, uh, smaller velocity we will have lower uh, pressure drop and as we go on increasing the velocity, the pressure drop will be higher and higher and similarly, the pumping power that will also increase uh, because of the change in the pressure drop. Actually, <coughs> the middle uh, column only, middle column only we have done the calculation, we have done the calculation for this, for uh, the uh, left hand side column and the right hand side column we have not done any calculation, but the values have been given. Uh, so, it is a good opportunity that you can repeat this problem, which is a very comprehensive problem for um, different uh, uh, water velocity through the coolant tube and check whether you are getting this uh, figures or not. So, this will give you a good practice. Keeping that in mind, I have uh, selected this problem so that you can go for this. Now, uh, <coughs> what generally is left for the, let us go to the, this is of course, last slide, blah, but let, let us discuss what we do, what design we have, what design features we have got and then um, what is left, quite a few things are left. Uh, uh, the heat exchanger design is not complete, quite a few things are left. The tubes are quite large, uh, sorry, the tubes are quite lengthy. Uh, by our calculation, we have got around 13 meter and uh, if we go on increasing the water velocity, the tube length will increase further and you can get even 15 uh, meter length of tube. So, obviously, such a long tube cannot be rested on two tube seats at the ends of the heat exchanger. So, we should have arrangement for supporting the tube in between. So, this is one thing one has to think of and this support generally comes in the form of uh, baffles <coughs> and when the baffles are there, so they will also help to have the cross flow of the cell side fluid in this case which is your the vapor, which is the vapor of or steam which is flowing through the um, uh, which is flowing through the condenser. So, this is one thing. Let me go uh, to certain other features of the heat exchanger which has to be taken care of. So, first thing is your these are the things which one has to take care of tube support which is very obvious because the tubes are very long. Then second thing that condensate should collect at the bottom of the condenser surface condenser and then from there it has to be taken out of the condenser. So, there is something called hot well. In surface condenser, so there is something called hot well. So, the hot well design is also 
uh, to be done uh, when we are designing the surface condenser. Then steam inlet this also needs to be designed. Then of course, the headers of the cell headers uh, tube sheet gasket expansion device if required if required okay so all these things there are many other things in the heat exchanger all these things uh, our thermal hydraulic design has not taken care of and obviously, the cell thickness etcetera those are also uh, points to be looked into. So, all these things are to be taken care of. <coughs> so, with this uh, I think uh, I can go back to the uh, last slide. So, uh, thank you for joining and uh, uh, you see last uh, 2 3 lecture we are continuing a problem because it because of its comprehensiveness and I think we are at the end. So, you can <coughs> recapitulate it and uh, you can also do the problem by changing some parameter one parameter change I have shown that is the velocity of coolant or liquid water through the tubes. So, you can check the design the design principle thank you.